Thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. This is awesome. Look at all these faces. I need to know all of you. I don't know all of you, but uh, after the meeting, hopefully we'll have some time for some introductions. Um, today, we're going to learn a little bit about ATI, Worksite Solutions, how we got started, uh, what our core elements are, how you can help us to continue to grow. But the most important thing for you to know today is we are not just another on-site provider. There's a lot of them out there. Name them off, Concentra, what's another on-site occupational provider? Anybody know one? Concentra? Come on, come on, come on. I have prizes up here, guys. Did you guys not know I have prizes for participation? Nothing? What's one of the hospitals in the area? You know they've got an occupational center, right? What? Okay, there. See how easy that was? <laughs> did you guys see? She did that. This is an ATI Worksite Solution badge clip. Very nice. You will all want one before the end of this meeting, okay? There you go. All right. So before we get started, I really want to give you the background of the principle of what we do because it explains everything. This is where we all are today, right? We are all somewhere in the spectrum from peak health down to pain. Depending on who you are and how you have your chair set up and how you have your computer set up and what you did last night, you know, all of those things, you could be anywhere within the spectrum. You could be sore, you could be uncomfortable, you could be in peak health. These are the people we work with. This group right here. So when we're embedded within an employer, we're focused on this population. There are hundreds of medical providers out there that focus on this, right? The doctors, they're happy to do surgery, they're happy to do injections, they're happy to be reactive to pain. This, in the world of workers' comp, is when a claim is filed. This is now typically a recordable. This is a, this are the hot buttons that employers say, I don't want anybody down here. And yet every single day, employers are paying thousands upon thousands of dollars to treat a very small spectrum of their population. So our focus is up here because we know, and what we've proven over time, is if we can engage in this population, if we can really find out that they're in discomfort early on, we can turn it around. And we can get that curve back up and get them back towards peak health. But we have to know about it ahead of time. Not what you typically see in occupational providers. They focus on claim management, right? So that is our basic tenant. <clears throat> Historically, we started back in 1995. Advanced Physical Therapy was a company in Indianapolis. I was uh, fortunate enough to be a, a part owner. Um, and in 1995, because Indiana was a employer-driven state for work comp, we started going out and interfacing with many employers, having a relationship with them and encouraging them that if they did need therapy, send your therapy to us. So, that's me. Still look the same, right? Do you guys love the video recorder? Look at that thing. I'm just like, talk about a work-related injury, good God. Um, you know, so we were out there interfacing with employers back in 1995, mostly focusing on education, really not doing of the, the, what we do today. We, uh, 2001, we started our first on-site program. And that was with FedEx, the FedEx uh, Air population over in Indianapolis. And what happened there was uh, the safety manager was a good friend of mine. They had about, oh gosh, at that time, 2,000 employees working from midnight till 5 a.m sorting packages as fast as they possibly could, and their injury rate was off the chart. Soft tissue injuries, and, and they needed another solution because at one o'clock in the morning, when someone was hurt at FedEx, they went to the occupational center, which was staffed with a resident, because real doctors don't work at one o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. right? The resident treated them very conservatively, took them off work, gave them medication, sent them to therapy, and then two weeks later, that person would come back to work and the symptoms would be gone, right? So they were fixed, and they'd go right back to doing the same thing that they were doing before, and they would get hurt again. So we came in and we said, there's gotta be a better way. There, there, we've gotta be able to do something differently here. So it, it was interesting because one of the first nights we walked around to sort with them 
we were watching people, and, and it was interesting for me to find out that their primary injury was wrist injuries. I really thought it was gonna be backs, right? I, you know, I'm thinking we're gonna be dealing with lots of backs and some shoulder issues. Wrist, off the chart wrist injuries. We're walking around on the catwalk, and by the way, how a package ever arrives where it's supposed to, <laughs> completely beyond me. Anyway, so here's all these boxes flying down um, the ramp, the slide, as you call it. The employees are all standing down here, and they're going to pick the boxes up, and they're going to put them in the cans. The cans are what go into the belly of the planes. The employees were stopping the boxes like this, even though there was a ridge right there. Now, think about that, right? We're all smart people. Think about 2,000 packages running into your wrist for four hours. Would your wrist hurt? Oh, hell yeah. Of course they would. This was an easy fix. This was a fix of us saying, you know what, we gotta walk around down there and smack people in the head and say, don't do that anymore. We dropped their recordable rate in three months, 70%. We were brilliant. <laughs> We were brilliant. We ended up losing that contract. You know why we lost the contract? Because the local hospital was really ticked off that we stopped the flow of patients to them. So they said to FedEx, you know what? We'll give you an athletic trainer free. Well, free is cheaper than us. So they took that athletic trainer. They still have them. They're not getting the same results. You don't get the same thing with free that you get with our program. And that's okay, because FedEx left and we started reevaluating our program. So from 2001 to 2011, we really tried to hone in on what is it that we need to do to make, to, to put the right magic together, right? So we started out with the EMTs. Our first programs were EMTs. We found out they're great when blood's involved. Not so good on soft tissue issues, sprains and strains. You know, you, you give them an impingement, they're like, okay, it's not bleeding, I don't know what to do. So, we said, maybe we need PTs. Yeah, that didn't work well either. Number one, they're too expensive, so I can't get a client to pay enough money to put a full-time PT on site, right? The other thing is that PTs really, while we are great at treating patients, which by the way, I'm a PT, not a lot of PTs want to go out at three o'clock in the morning when the trailer that, that's being loaded is 120 degrees and work with those employees. You think it's hard to find PTs for the clinics? <laughs> Try finding PTs that want to do that, right? But they weren't the right mix. They really, that wasn't uh, an, an area they were comfortable with. And what we found was the athletic trainer was perfect. They engage well with, with individuals. They're used to being in the field, right? They'll go out wherever. My God, if they can deal with sweaty, stinky wrestlers, manufacturing's not that far off of that, right? So the athletic trainer was the right model to work with. In 2011, our program exploded thanks to a little company called ATI, um, and we are where we are today. So let, let's talk a little bit about what that is. When we were acquired by ATI in 2011, you know, we had we had 18 people doing our jobs out there in the industries. Everyone was located in Indiana. ATI uh, acquired advanced physical therapy. Um, at that time, I was the chief operating officer. We had 19 clinics, and I was dabbling in the worksite solutions division. It was really my passion, but I didn't have enough time to deal with it. Um, and I remember Dylan came to me and said, we're not sure what that worksite solution thing is, but it sounds kind of neat, and it seems like you like it, do you want to do that full time? And I thought for a nanosecond and said, oh, hell yes, I do. It was an awesome day. So in the, in the span of three months, I turned 50, I got my dream job, and I adopted a baby. 50 is <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's good stuff. So we, we were acquired by ATI. Dylan also made a promise to me that ATI was going to support you in whatever you need to build this program. And it has been absolutely true. From IT to HR, from Vidya in Touchstone, building out our billing system, everything we needed to be able to take our business from 19 people to today, we have 156 
Couldn't have happened without ATI. And we are growing like gangbusters. So we're having a great time. It's been a good ride so far, and we're looking forward to another, another five years here. Let's talk about what we do. Traditional medical model, just to get a picture of that, right? Traditional medical model is reactive. You have pain, you go to the doctor. What do you expect from most physicians? Medicaid. Med, you already have a thing. Yeah. Who's yeah. that? Med? You don't have that. <laughs> okay, meds, right? If you don't get meds, they didn't do their job, right? Can you catch? Maybe. <laughs> that injury. <laughs> what else? What else do you expect? Come on, Simon. Surgeries. Surgeries, that's right. You're going to love that. <laughs> testing, right? Special testing. So a typical case in a traditional occupational world, someone goes in, even if they just go in with a contusion of the, of the bicep region, they're gonna get an x-ray. Why? I'm telling you, it's not broken. But they're gonna get x-ray because there's a physician there and they're gonna cover themselves. They're probably gonna get meds and they're gonna get taken off work. That goes back to that graph of expensive, right? That's very expensive. That traditional medical model is all about symptom management. It's not about how did that happen. It is not root cause. It is not talking about you as an employee, what do you have to do to get better? There is no accountability on the employee side, none, right? When we talk about the traditional medical model and people return to work from a non-work related issue, let's say they just had a total knee. They come back to work, they give their HR person a, a piece of paper that says, I can return to work, my doctor said so. HR says, okay, go out there and let me know if you have any problems. Do you know what kind of risk that holds for an employer? It could be that that employee is simply returning to work just because their short-term disability ran out. And they're really not better, but they need to get back to work. Now, that person is at high risk for a work comp injury. So what do we do? We don't do any of that. That's not us. Here's what we do. Early reporting, root cause. You'll see in just a moment, 90% of our time when we are on site with an employer is on the floor. We're walking around in the manufacturing setting. We're finding people who are doing things that are putting themselves at risk before they even know they're having discomfort and pain, right? It's a powerful moment when I can walk up to a guy like Simon and say, Simon, if you keep sitting like that, your back's gonna be killing you, right? <laughs> And when, that's when Simon says, my God, it already is. You're amazing. That's, thank you, Simon. <laughs> no, you already got one, okay, all right. Um, you know, that's an amazing point. That is a moment in time that we call coachable moments. We're out there on the floor walking up to people and giving them free health care. This doesn't have to be work-related. It can be non-work-related. Maybe you pulled your hamstring last night while you were trying to play softball and, and you're too old for that and you shouldn't be doing that. And they say, should I go to my, should I go to my doctor and get an x-ray? No, 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 no. Don't go to your doctor and get an x-ray for your hamstring. And so we'll manage those cases. We're saving the employer money there, right? We're gonna be making sure that every person that comes back to work is fit for duty. They're not at risk. They're fully capable of doing their job and we're gonna coach them through that return to work process and we're managing their traditional transitional duty. This is our pinwheel. This is everything that we do. Now, understand that when ATI acquired us, we were doing injury prevention and intervention. We're very different today than we were. We started out employing athletic trainers. Today, we employ nurse practitioners, RNs, x-ray techs, physicians, when we have to, one. <laughs> We contract one physician. Thank you, compliance, there you go. Thank you for training, I appreciate that. Um, but what we do is we look at the client and we say, what are your injuries? What type of professional do you need in your setting for us to be effective? And that's who we look for. Let's talk just briefly about this. So right up here, early detection, the on-site intervention. This is the very, the very center of what we do. This is walking around, engaging, um, you know, sometimes I have clients say, are you kidding me? You're going to charge me $10,000 a month for someone to just walk around and talk to my employees? And I say, exactly. That's exactly what you're doing. Because we're going to be talking with your employees about things no one else is talking to them about. Supervisors are worried about performance. Did you get the widget made, right? 
Not how did you get the widget made. Not were you at risk for an injury. We're going to focus on those things. So we are looking for root cause. I always tell the story that most employers, if you talk with them, they all know the concept of early reporting. If you say to them, so Corey, do you guys really push for early reporting? And they say, oh yeah, yeah, we do early reporting. Well, here's what most early reporting looks like in the manufacturing setting. The employee goes up to the supervisor and says, hey, you told me to report, I want you to know my shoulder's bothering me. Supervisor, always rolls his eyes, oh, groans, and says, well, do you want to go see the doctor? The employee says, well, it's not that bad. I don't think I need to go. The, employee says, or the supervisor says, well, I tell you what, when it gets bad enough, you need to see the doctor, you let me know and we'll get you out there. That's our golden moment. That's our moment that we can say, instead of just go away and don't bother me, tell me when you need to see the doctor, let's go look at what you're doing. Let's talk about the fact that your shoulder's bothering you and, oh yeah, you sleep on your stomach with your arms up over your head. Could that be contributing? Absolutely it could. What else do you do? Are you a tennis player and it's your dominant arm? Could that contribute to your shoulder pain? Absolutely. Those are the moments we engage and, and try to find out the root cause and get a fix, right? We also have the opportunity at that moment to get it in the right bucket. What I mean by the right bucket is, if it's non-work related, don't report it as work related. So you get your employees, we get to know those employees, you get your employee that comes in and says, I have a bicep tendonitis. And you know that employee is an archer. He bow hunts, and it's bow hunting season. Guess what? That's not work related. That's because he's been practicing. That's a big impact for the employer. You've now taken a work-related issue into a non-work-related bucket. Injury triage, case management, this is the traditional stuff. This is making sure that when the case needs physical therapy, we're getting it to the TI clinic. We're getting it expedited to the right orthopedic surgeon. We're getting them back to work as quickly as we possibly can. What that does is it eliminates for an employer something called their dart rate, days away, restricted time. We want them back to work as fast as we can possibly get them without injuring them. Leave of absence management, we're doing that, fit for duty assessments. In the prevention side, we're coaching every day. We're intervening with employees, we're talking to them about position, we're, we're coaching them on the simplest things. So let, let me give you an example. Okay, we talked about the, the FedEx thing, right? Duh, the wrist. Watch an employee after they've been sitting and you watch them walk and they get up and their first couple steps are like this. What are you gonna do? Somebody, come on. What? Is your foot asleep? Is your foot asleep? You go, what's wrong with your foot? Who's the therapist in here? Who knows what that is? Plantar fasciitis. Thank you! Whoa, catch it! Oh! <laughs> it's plantar fasciitis, that's right. In, in a brief 30 seconds, I can show that person how to stretch that and make it feel better. I changed their lives, right? Those are little things, but it makes a difference, okay? Well done. Are you a therapist? Nope. Wow! <laughs> I, ha I have it. <laughs> Remind me to show you what you do for that. <laughs> um, we also get into health and wellness, medical surveillance, whether that's hearing testing, spirometry testing, um, so the full spectrum of the program is included in what we do. All right, let's see. Work on me. There we go. So let's look at some pictures of what, where we're working. This is Hendrickson. Um, they are making the axles that go underneath trailers. What's this guy going to have at the end of the day? Shoulder issues, right? People do this all day long. We've got to intervene and find a way to do this different. The problem here is this guy's tall enough for the job, this guy's not, right? So it's an individual issue that we need to address. God forbid these women. Seriously, look at this job. They are, this is the side of a trailer, and every rivet on the side of a trailer is being put in by hand. And these ladies will lay there all day, and they will slide this platform up and down the side of the trailer for them to put rivets in. Oh my God, right? Sometimes our job is as simple as making sure 
they understand how they can feel as good as they possibly can. There's not a lot I can do on this job. Uh, side note, uh, trailer manufacturing has the, one of the lowest margins in manufacturing. So yeah, there's a ton of design things I can give them. They're not gonna do it. They're, they're simply not. By the way, these are blue shirts, which I know in this plant means they're temp employees. The other reason I know that is that's one of the suckiest jobs in the plant, which is where the temp goes. Right? This is Kirby Risk. This is, uh, they're making wire harnesses. Um, so, think about this woman, arms extended all day long, pinch grip. Stress to the upper shoulder area? You bet there is. Huge stress. Add to the fact some of these ladies are going to be working up into their 50s and 60s. Females lose their muscle mass in the upper extremities. Are they going to have problems? Yes, they will. We are very, very active at Kirby Risk. Ah, one of my favorite locations. This is Allosource. This is human bone. Yeah. So we work everywhere, guys, right? <laughs> so um, what, in, in two days, I went one day to a heavy manufacturing, and the next day I went to Allosource. And as I was taking my tour of the site, they started at the top of the building, and they pulled the leg out of a bag. And I watched them take that entire leg down to every single part that is being used in human am implants. That's what they do. And we have a full-time athletic trainer there. So, you know, not just manufacturing. These people are in these hoods with three pairs of gloves on, which changes your dexterity, changes the forces in your hands. And from everything from saws, hand saws, power saws, to grinders, I know, you just had lunch, sorry. <laughs> but, but you know what, they, they reuse it. They, they, that's, if you had dental work done, you just had something from Allosource because that's where dental paste comes from, is this stuff being ground up. These contraptions in the hood weigh almost 18 pounds. Do you think it has an impact on their neck? Yes, it does. The other thing that's interesting about this setting is it's such a sterile environment that between workflows, they have to stay in the room and their hands have to stay above <laughs> chest level for hygiene. If you drop them down below, you've got to go through the whole scrubbing process again. So they have to say like this. I just, I know that seems little, but if you had to do that for an hour, you're going to feel it, right? Fascinating. They even took the titanium screws out of his knee because the guy had had an ACL repair and they're reusing those screws. Amazing, amazing. Oh yeah, we also help them make airplanes. How different can that be, right? So this is uh, Spirit Aerosystems. This is the 787. Um, you go to one end of the building, it's a bunch of parts. You go to the other end, and a 787 goes out. Fascinating, absolutely fascinating location. Um, really cool story here. This is Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita. They have a full medical facility there, but their injuries were off the chart because they were all doing the traditional model. We had a safety guy who said, I like your concept, let's bring two people in just for this line and see if you have any impact. Guess who's getting ready to take over their occupational department? Right? Beautiful story. That's, for, that's going from two people to 16 people. Those are great stories. Totally different impact. You know, the, well, you can imagine the positions these folks get in. We helped them build uh, Hondas. This is the new Honda plant, Greensburg, Indiana. Um, again, same exact thing. Started with two people. They had a full occupational center, and we're taking over their occupational medicine program as of tomorrow. Great story. Totally different model. We will also have x-ray techs. We will also have nurse practitioners, but 90% of their time's on the floor. If you're not shooting an x-ray, you're out on the floor. You're working with people, you're coaching people. Uh, this is a seating factory. This is for SIA, where they are hand stitching every car seat. Hand injuries left and right, <laughs> no pun intended. This is beer man uh, bottle manufacturing site. Um, bottle making is the oldest manufacturing in the United States, and the factories look like it. They still look like 1905. 
Um, then we go and to where they store all the beer, and then we get together and we all drink all the beer, right? <laughs> Life goes full circle. <laughs> all right, let's see. Got some pictures here of our folks engaging. We're everywhere. You know, our folks are in hard hats, they're in uh, respirators. This is, um, this is the die cast, so they're making engine blocks at this site. Forklifts, um, common place of injury because uh, for, for therapy reference, people get in and out of forklifts, they always step up on the same, with the same leg, and they jump out, they land on the same leg. Lynn, what does that cause? SI injuries. Come on, Lynn. You're a PT. Checking my email. Are you checking? <laughs> 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 what can I take away from you? She's so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, this is the axle working out on the floor uh, where they're manufacturing the axles that go into the trailers. Um, and this is a site where they're making screws. All they do is make screws for automotive. So we are taking everything from application point to retirement. We're doing everything that's included under first aid for triage. So OSHA says we can, um, we can do massage, we can do heat and ice, we can job coach, we can do stretches. All of that is allowed under first aid without triggering a recordable. That's all we do. So think about your athletic trainers typically do things like ultrasounds, electrical stim, all, we don't do any of that because that would trigger a recordable. Our job is to get the recordables down, all right? Our key is 75% resolution in-house without sending anybody out the door. And we always exceed that, so far, always. Full-scale occupational medicine, we also do consulting projects. <coughs> Which means we're going in, we're working on manufacturing fixes, we're redesigning lines. Uh, many employers, uh, when they are getting ready to redesign a new building, will bring us in to help make sure they get the right equipment the first time. That could be anything from the right desks to the right um, flow in the workflow process. We write job descriptions for the ADA, human resource folks in here, ADA issues. We do office ergonomics. I don't know this guy <laughs> Where's Alex? Did he leave? He knew this was coming. I knew this was coming. So this is Alex with his Vera desk. This is a sit-stand desk. And the reason I put this on here is because it's a great example of how a good piece of equipment can really be screwed up. Seriously, he knows this. I already told him that. The very desk is wonderful for people and it works for him when he stands. But like myself, Alex is vertically challenged. And because this sits on top of the desk, it is so high that he can't use it when he's sitting. Anytime we come in and you can't see this real well, but he's perched on the end of the chair and his feet are like dangling like Edith Ann, you guys remember that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Alex is so gonna get me. Um, but he, he can't get it low enough for his height, right? So I told him, you know, we gotta either get you a footstool to get your foot up on, to, to raise yourself up. I know, right? Is this, are you recording this? Yes. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you talk about what we do to help people, people stay healthy. And, and everybody in, immediately thinks of manufacturing. Office ergonomics are critical. I mean, how many of you in here sit behind a computer for seven plus hours a day and then go home and do the same thing? My gosh, do we need to be helping some people there? I think so. I think so. So the very desk, you know, I, I, what I'm hearing is I walk around the, the corporate offices, everybody wants one. My answer is nobody gets one until we evaluate the workstation and make sure you really need one. Then, are you going to use it? Most of these things stay in one position and never get moved because it's a hassle. So, okay, anyway, why more than ever are we needed now? Why are we experiencing the growth that we are? Well, a couple things are happening. It's the perfect storm. Employers over the, the recession have cut every bit of fluff out of their business they possibly can. But their work comp injury rates, their, their uh, health employee premium rates are continuing to go up. They've got to find a different way of dealing with injuries. But the main thing is the aging workforce. This is not the typical aging worker, right? I, I've been in a lot of plants and I've never found this guy, right? I find a lot, 
of these guys, <laughs> right? You know, they're, they're 65 plus, they're diabetic, they're smokers, they haven't been to the doctor, they're hypertensive, but they don't know it. And they're out there working eight to 10 hours a day in 110 degrees heat. Why are we needed? That's the reason. We also know that uh, worksite injuries, while they're decreasing overall, the numbers that aren't decreasing are sprains and strains and slip trips and falls. So safety programs have done a great job of stopping lacerations and contusions and deaths and um, pinch issues. They're still having sprains and strains. In fact, those are starting now to go up, which is because of the aging population. That is our sweet spot, right? Costs for the injuries are going up. And the general health of workers, I'm telling you, it's not there, right? It's not there. That is a hamburger. That guy was really eating it. I did not <laughs> stage that picture. Frightening, right? So that's why we're here. We're out on the floor being the eyes and the ears for the employer, taking care of the most important asset, and that's the people. Where are we? Tell you a few stories. When we started with ATI, we were at Lilly, <coughs> Mead Johnson, Wabash Trailer, and Hendrickson. All of these clients have been added since then. Our growth today is about 60% coming from existing clients. What I mean by that is Cooper Tire, that builds tires, everything from car tires to tires as big as this room, right? started with us at one plant. They just added another plant, and we're targeted toward the end of the year to start in Missolo, Missolo Tupelo, Mississippi, Tupelo, Mississippi. That's it, Tupelo, Mississippi, right? <laughs> Tell you another fast story, FedEx came to us uh, two and a half years ago, FedEx Ground, and said, we've heard what you guys do, we're gonna put you right up against another provider that does what you do. We know that's not true. And we're gonna see who does better in our plants, or in our, our, in our hubs. So we started in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, two years ago. Went up head to head against another provider, blew them out of the water. They added two more sites, and I just got off a call today where they want six more facilities before the end of the year. That's awesome. That's a story, yeah, that's, I, can't, I can't stop that growth. That's, that's wonderful because they see it works. They see it works. Allosource is uh, the cadaver lab. J.J. Taylor delivers beer and wine. Um, let's see, FedEx has been a great partner. And what you'll see on here is a lot of unions. Union shops love us. They don't like us at first because they think we're there to stop medical care. But once they know what we're there to do, the union shops are our best friends. Proud of this growth. This growth is only happening because I am blessed to have 140 people that work for me that love their job. One of the things we did at our all-company meeting a couple months ago, Cliff was there, um, is we talked about having a why. That if you don't have a why, then you just have a job. If you have a why, then you have a passion. Your why is why you go to work every day. And I encourage you guys to go to our website, to go to our LinkedIn page and our Facebook page, and look at it, because you're gonna see all of our employees telling you what their why is that their why is there to make a difference in people's lives. So as a clinician, I went from treating 10, 15 patients a day to touching thousands of lives by making a difference. And the reason we're growing is because every single one of my employees believes in their why. They're doing something different. How can you help us grow? Don't tell us that there's a big building down the street. We see it. <laughs> um, been with ATI five years. I haven't gotten a lead yet from anybody at ATI. Who wants to be first? Right? I believe in this room there should be at least five valid leads with an employer that we can make a difference with. But what do we need to know? We need to know there's more than a big building because big buildings don't have many people oftentimes, and they rarely have a lot of injuries in distribution. It's just not a high injury rate place. They sit in a forklift and they drive around, they don't touch anything. What we want to know is any employer with over 300 employees, 
So we go with a ratio of about one full-time person to three to 500 employees, okay? We wanna know any job where people are doing physical work. <coughs> Doesn't sound hard, right? But there are many jobs that are very automated. Steel industries, for instance. Not a lot of injuries in steel industries because when everything's running perfectly, the operators sit up in the pulpit and they do this. They punch a button. So when you think, Steel industry, that would be a hot place to go. No pun intended. Come on, everybody. Let's go. Come on. <laughs> Thank you for a laugh. Okay. You, sir, get a bat. Oh. 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 See? That's your, oh, you wait a second. No. <laughs> Pulling rank on him. Pulling rank. Um, so it has to be physical work. We want to make sure in most cases that it's an end product employer. Well, what do I mean by that? Go back to the concept of a steel manufacturer. There is very little margin in steel. Steel companies run with thin, thin margins. Who has bigger margins, i.e. they have money to pay for us, are the end product suppliers. So the people who make the cars to sell to you. They're making it from the steel, but the steel companies are not gonna have the money to afford us. The car manufacturers, yes they will. Does that make sense? So in product suppliers. High sprains and sprains and or high turnover. And lastly, in many cases, has a current provider. Because that means they already have money. <laughs> they have money allocated for a program. We just have to get them to change to our program. To go into an organization that has all of these things, and tell them, we need you to allocate $100,000 to $110,000 extra a year for us to put a full-time person on is a big jump for many employers because they've already paid their insurance premium, right? And they're still gonna have to pay their insurance premium even though they're paying for us and they're not using it. They still have to pay their premium. So that's where it's challenging for us to get them over that, that hump, right? Introduce us, you know, a safety professional. They're, they're our best friends. They're the ones that get us in most sites. Plant managers and or union representatives, also our best friends. We even love the people in human resources. <laughs> I love that picture, isn't that great? <laughs> I'm a people person, right? Human resources, any of those contacts are valid contacts for us. That's a hot lead. That tells us that's somebody that we can work with. So, what is our mission? Our mission statement is different than ATI's. Um, although we conform to the ATI mission statement, ours is added to provide a fully integrated on-site team of healthcare providers dedicated to proactive engagement-based strategies for total worker health. And that's what we do. Um, we're growing, we're continuing to bring on new clients. I really, I'm open to questions. I wanted to keep us within our time frame today and I don't, you, you have no idea how much I appreciate you coming and listening to what we do. And I hope you learned something today. Um, and I am, oh, that's my son up there. <laughs> Cute little booger. Um, I'm open to questions, thoughts, ideas. Things running in your head or you think, gosh, I wonder if. Anybody? Yes, Ramon. So when you talk about insurance premiums that the employers have to pay, if they go a certain time frame without the affordable and things like that, how does that affect their rates for premiums? Yep. So great, great thought. The premiums generally level out. They're never going to go down. We know that. <laughs> insurance premiums are never going down, but at least they won't experience the increase. If it's a self-insured employer, you know, what we can tell them is, look, after you don't utilize that money that's set aside for a certain period of time, you can bring that back in. But on their budget that year, it's an ad additional allocation. Everything we do is pre-recordable, pre-injury, <clears throat> pre-claim. That's why we cannot get paid out of the cop dollars. <laughs> Lynn. First off, I wanted to say congratulations. You've built the health program. Thank you, guys. Really have it's very very impressive. So on behalf of everybody, awesome job. Secondly, have we thought about putting somebody here at the corporate office? Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at you know not only ergonomics, but you know, kind of.
kind of almost even expanding that in, into kind of a you know employee coach kind of position here. I could see where that would be extremely valuable for morale. Mm -hmm. uh, we're self-insured, lowering mm -hmm. our own claims. So that, and then thirdly, ha have we explored um, other healthcare institutions in the sense that large hospital groups, you always have you know, high risk management um, claims in, in the nursing profession, sure do. large medical groups, um, you know, have, have we thought about going in and, and seeing what might be you know, an opportunity? She just alienated our HR person. So, so the first thing was, I'm just doing my part. I know. <laughs> You're a giver, man. We appreciate that. You want a bed, aren't you? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it was all leather, maybe. I will. <laughs> our budget, you know. Uh, I got, I'll see what they can come up with us for the next meeting. But uh, number one, thank you very much. I've never in my life had more fun. I, honest to God, I have my why. I get crazy teary-eyed, that could be menopause, I don't know, but I love my job. I love what I do. I, you get that, don't you? <laughs> 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 um, number two, number two, um, yeah, I, you know, I think there is a place for that here. I, I do, do you have a contact? You know I do. Okay. okay. Credit for that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> um, number three, healthcare institutes are very interesting because conceptually, at the entry level, they get it. They're safety people, they're HR people, they get it until it gets up to the top sign off on that money. And that person at the top says, wait a second, why are we paying for this? Don't we have a bunch of physical therapists in this building? And it gets stopped. I have yet to close a healthcare deal. And it's for that reason. Now, the truth is, those people who are working in physical therapy, they're treating patients. They're not going to be doing the interface that we do. I, I, I hope the day will come that that changes because the nursing profession, they teach help bad. In fact, there's something on the NATA website about that now. So, great idea though. You had a question, Simon? Yeah, how do you measure? You're back. You want me to? I'm good. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> how do you measure the financial benefit that clients get? What, what does that look like? Yeah, so financial, so we call those KPIs, Key Performance Index, um, Key Performance Metrics, whichever you look at. We want to see their DART rate go down, which is the days away, restricted time. Uh, so that's an industry number. We want to see their OSHA recordable rate go down. Um, and one of the measures we'll look at is what is their recordable rate compared to other industries just like them. The ones that we want to go into are going to be significantly above the national norm for that business sector. Then we look at work comp claims. Now, what is the spend? What's going out the door? What's the frequency of the cases? What's the total spend of the cases? Those are the biggest metrics. We like to find employers who say, you know what? Morale, let's measure that. <laughs> Not everybody cares about that. They, they really don't. But those metrics, they mean a lot to the employer. So employers that have to get government contracts for their business, the government looks at what their DART rate is, and if their DART rate gets too high, they lose those government contracts. So those people are very motivated for us to come in and re reduce the DART rate. Other questions? Can we look at um, group health cost reduction? So if they're self-insured and trying to do prevention, or uh, like nutrition program and then for employees and their families? We, we do. Um, it's very difficult for employer to get employers to give us their comp information. It's nearly impossible to get them to give us their employee health cost and spend. With the employers that are good partners, they will articulate to us that yes, you do a lot to our comp, but you really save us a ton on the health side. I can't give you any data on that because they don't, they don't want to release it. Where we feel like we are very effective on the health side is doing things like um, Coaching minor injuries and resolving those in-house. Finding people who need to be on medications and they're not taking them, so we're avoiding cat catastrophic type issues. But what, one of the things we'll do across the board, all of our trainers and, and nurses will go out on one day a month and they're all gonna do blood pressures. Just walk around with a blood pressure cuff. I won't, I can't tell you the number, but we have had well over 20 people that were at 200 over 130 on their blood pressure, that were on manufacturing floors, out there doing work, and they felt fine. Mm -hmm. Now, did we save that employer money? I, I like to think so. Yeah. 
you know? Um, but simple things like that make a difference. We like to go into uh, manufacturing floors and take out all their vending machines. Or if they're gonna keep their vending machines, encourage the employer to charge $5 for a candy bar and a quarter for an apple. You can have the candy bar if you want to spend it. I'm not going to take it away from you, but those are the changes that we try to make when we're out on the floor. Also, we want to be the, uh, the eyes and the ears for the employer perks. You know, what do you have? Do you have EAP available to you? Do you have all these other services? When did you get your eyes checked last time? Now, if we're out there on the floor and we're watching somebody put rivets in and they're standing like this trying to put rivets in, pretty good guess that their vision's not real good, right? Let's get them in and get their vision checked. So those are the interfaces that we might find on the health side. Have we looked at partnering with like an EAP provider where there's something where we could do broader company reach with a partner like that? It's an interesting question. Have we done a partnership with the EAP? I've never thought about that. My God, you get a bag. <laughs> wow. She's been here like two days. I know. <laughs> I know, but two days, and she comes up with that, a lead, see, right? It's an idea. Thank you all for coming. I know you gotta get back to your desks. I really appreciate it. Reach out. Reach out if you have any potential leads, if you know someone who knows someone who knows someone, that's a lead, right? We appreciate it, we, we will take it. So uh, thank you all, have a great day.